Hey, my name's Andy. I'm a Cambly tutor, and I'm here today to talk to you about the Cambly Library. I'm going to be covering four questions in today's video. One, what exactly is the library? Two, where do I find it? Three, what should I tell the student about the library? And four, how do I prepare and use it? Stay tuned, because in today's video, I'm going to be giving you lots of hints and tips to help you make the most out of your classes using the Cambly courses. Question number one. What is the Cambly Library? The Cambly Library is a collection of grammar and speaking activities that the student can sign up for on their own. They are the Cambly courses. All of these courses are arranged in modules by levels and also by topics, and the teacher can switch through the slides easily in the classroom. You can also change the class entirely if you need by accessing the drop-down menu. See, it's pretty easy to use. The idea of the Cambly library is that you don't have to prepare at all. The instructions are very easy to use. You can just go through them with the student in the classroom, but I do recommend that you prepare for these beforehand. You see, the student can access the slides before the class for them to study and familiarize themselves with the vocabulary that's going to be covered. I love to encourage my students each and every time to take a look at all the slides beforehand. Also, at the end of the class, the student is going to be prompted on whether he has finished that class or not. If for any reason you didn't get a chance to finish everything in that session, the student can click no, he hasn't finished, and that same class is going to pop up next time that he connects to another tutor. So where is the Cambly library? Well, on the student side, they can access the library by going to the dashboard. They'll see courses right at the top. If they click it, they'll be able to see all the modules, all the topics and levels. And by clicking on one of them, they can see an overview of the class. They can also preview everything. They can check out the slides, look at the vocabulary, and familiarize themselves with the topics that are going to be discussed in the class. On the teacher's side, on the dashboard, you'll see library right at the top. You'll be seeing all the classes just like the students. Plus, in the classroom, you can also switch through, like I had said before, you can switch through all the classes by accessing the drop-down menu on the right. You have complete control. So what should you tell the student about the Cambly Library? This is a moment that we have to talk about meeting students for the first time. Your first session with a student is super important, whether that be if the student is connecting for the first time to a tutor or if you're just seeing them for the first time yourself. You wanna make sure to ask them a few of the following questions. First and foremost, I always greet the student enthusiastically and I have them tell me about themselves. Lastly, I want to make sure to ask about their goals. So I want to say something like this in the beginning. Hi, my name's Andy. Can you tell me a little about yourself and your goals for Cambly, please? One time a veteran tutor said that you should approach the student the first time you see them as if you're seeing a long lost friend. You know, this is the moment that you can make the student feel so much more comfortable with you in the classroom and it's going to, you know, break the ice, break down any barriers that they might have. Sometimes these students are very shy and we want to warm them up. I like to screen share. Screen sharing feature is an excellent feature that allows you to work with so many different types of material. You can work with your own stuff that you might have on the computer. You can open a website and share that. If it's a kid's class, you can share games. There's so many things on the internet. And use the screen sharing function to open the library, show them the courses, show them the different levels, the different things that you can teach them. And one last tip, you could take this moment to select Select one of the classes that you're more familiar with and showcase what you've got to offer. So what should you do to prepare and use the library? Well, I suggest that you take 10 to 15 minutes a day for you to study them. Get to know the courses and the different classes, the vocabulary, the questions that are going to be asked, and the grammar. It's really important for you to be prepared, especially if it's the first time you're meeting a student. You want to make a good first impression, right? Let's take a look at this together. Let's click on library. Notice that here, mine says that Cambly will promote me to students that are enrolled in these courses. And why is that? That's because I have added them to my profile. If I click on one of them, you'll notice that I can remove it from my profile. So I'm going to remove it. Now I get a big yellow button. On the student side, they're going to get a green button saying enroll. So when I click on adding to profile, Cambly will ask me a few questions just to make sure that I have reviewed this course. 
The recommended level for students starting this course is intermediate and one of the classes are uh, catching some Z's. I'll submit it and voila, it's added to my profile. Done. So how in the world should I prepare for this? Let's go back. I'm going to click on one of these just to show you basic conversation topics. I'll see here that I have 10 classes in this course. Let's click on the first one, foods you love. When you click on this uh, on the class, you'll you'll see two sets of slides before the lesson and the lesson slides themselves that pop up in the classroom. The before the lesson slides here, you got vocabulary, things to think about, which are the main questions to link into the class, and the grammar that's going to be covered, the structure. So let's take a look at vocabulary, and I'm going to give you a few hints and tips on how to work with vocabulary in your class. I like to say that when you enter the classroom, you enter your lab. Why do we call it a lab? Because you first link, then you got to ask, and then you build. You build on and build on. You expand and expand. We're here to increase the student's vocabulary, making corrections, and making sure that we're also writing everything in the chat, because remember, they can use this afterwards to study from, including the video as well. So. How am I going to link? Since we're talking about food, I can say, have you had lunch? The student might say yes, might say no. If they say yes, I can ask, did you have chicken today? Now, since I'm using the verb have, I want to make sure to mention to the student that I can replace the verb eat and drink with the verb have. That way the student understands clearly. You know, I can ask them, did you have water? Did you have any soda? Now, Going back into this specific word group, the meat word group, and when I ask them, have you had lunch? If they say yes, I can ask them, did you have chicken? If they say yes or no, then I could build on about chicken, or I can ask about the meat group. So chicken is a very common dish that we have at lunch. Uh, can you give me some other examples of meats that you usually eat at lunchtime? Then, as the student is telling me, I'm going to be writing everything in the chat so he gets visual assimilation. Sometimes the student can read a little better, sometimes they hear a little better, so, you know, you got to understand the type of student that you have. Same thing with vegetables. I can ask them, did you have any tomatoes on your plate today? Yes, teacher, I did. No, I didn't. Tell me some other types of vegetables that you know of. Okay, then I'm also going to be writing everything in the chat. When they're finished, I can do one of two things. I can open maybe some pictures of other vegetables. I can talk about some common vegetables that I have here in the area, some things that I might find at the supermarket. So you can always expand and build on and build on with the student. Make sure you link from vegetables, then maybe I can ask about fruits. Okay, so you know these vegetables. What are the fruits that you know? Give me some examples of fruits. I'm going to be writing everything down. Since this might be with a beginner, I might ask them to spell it for me because I want to check to see if they know the letters of the alphabet. If they make some type of mistake when they're pronouncing, you can play the fool. How do you play the fool? You just pretend like you didn't hear. More advanced students sometimes have uh, the understanding that they have made a mistake and they're able to correct themselves. They can make self-corrections, but sometimes with beginners, you have to show them. So I'm just like, what? I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. Say that again. They'll repeat, and then you want to write it again in the chat so they can have visual assimilation, and you can repeat clearly. Say it after me. You say it, they'll repeat, great, you move on. Always make sure you do this. When it comes to the grammar, if you have any sort of trouble understanding the grammar, please look on the internet. You can search for this information. There's plenty of information online. Or you can also access Cambly Corner. Post a question on there. See what the tutors there are going to say. Now, there is a very big support group on Cambly Corner. Everyone's here to help. That's it for today. I hope that these hints and tips have helped you make your classes that much better. And don't forget to sign up to Cambly's YouTube channel as well as Cambly's Facebook group called the Cambly Corner for even more support from our tutor community.